The Layers of the Atmosphere by Kate O'Donnell. The Earth is surrounded by gases. We call the gases surrounding Earth the atmosphere. Nitrogen is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere. Oxygen, which humans and animals breathe, makes up about 20% of the atmosphere. The atmosphere does many jobs. It blocks some of the sun's heat so the earth doesn't get too hot. It also traps some of the sun's heat so the earth doesn't get too cold. On the moon, which doesn't have an atmosphere, it is boiling hot when the moon faces the sun and freezing when the moon faces away from the sun. The atmosphere also blocks radiation from the sun. Sunlight is another word for radiation. Sunlight is helpful, but it can be dangerous. For example, sunlight can cause skin cancer. People should wear sunscreen to protect themselves from sunlight. The atmosphere is not the same everywhere. There are layers in the atmosphere. The lowest layer in the atmosphere is called the troposphere. The troposphere is the layer of the atmosphere where we live. Almost all weather happens in the troposphere because 99% of the water vapor on Earth exists in the troposphere. Warm air rises and cool air falls, so the air in the troposphere is always mixing. The troposphere reaches from the surface of the Earth up to between 7 and 20 kilometers. The troposphere is thicker at the equator than the poles for three reasons. First, the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It's slightly ovoid, a three-dimensional oval. As a result, the poles are just a little bit closer to the center of the Earth than the equator, and they have more gravity. The increased gravity holds the air molecules above the poles closer to the ground. Second, the Earth spins faster at the equator because it is wider than the poles. The equator spins at 1,040 miles per hour, and the poles spin at 0.00005 miles per hour. The spinning at the equator pushes the air molecules farther away from the surface of the Earth. Third, warm air takes up more space than cool air. Sunlight hits the equator more directly than the poles, so the air is warmer around the equator and takes up more space. The boundary between the troposphere and the next layer, the stratosphere, is called the tropopause. The jet streams are just below the tropopause. Jet streams are like rivers in the sky. They are fast-moving winds that separate hot air and cold air. When planes fly in the direction of the jet stream, they move faster and use less fuel. The second layer in the atmosphere is the stratosphere. The stratosphere reaches from the top of the troposphere to about 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The stratosphere has a lot less air than the, the troposphere. It also has only a tiny bit of water vapor. This means there are almost no clouds in the stratosphere. The lack of air may also makes it difficult for planes to fly within it. However, some planes do fly along the bottom of the stratosphere to avoid the turbulence of the jet streams. The ozone layer is in the stratosphere. Ozone is a molecule made up of three oxygen atoms. In the stratosphere, ozone blocks harmful radiation from the sun. Unlike the troposphere, the air in the stratosphere doesn't move and mix because in the stratosphere, the air gets warmer as you move farther away from Earth. The warm air already floats on the cold air, so it doesn't move. Even though there is very little air in the stratosphere, there's still life in it. Scientists have found bacteria on dust in the stratosphere, and some birds fly through the lower part of the stratosphere, including rubble's vulture and bar-headed geese. Scientists, and even students, have sent helium balloons up into the stratosphere to learn more about it. In 2012, Felix Baumgartner achieved the highest skydive ever when he jumped from a balloon into the stratosphere. The mesosphere is located above the stratosphere. It starts at about 50 kilometers above the surface of the Earth and ends about 85 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The area between the mesosphere and the stratosphere is called the stratopause. Not much is known about the mesosphere because it's too high for airplanes or weather balloons to reach, and it's too low for satellites. Sometimes scientists can get information about the mesosphere as rockets pass through it, but these trips are short. We do know that many meteorites burn up in the mesosphere. As a result, there's a lot of iron and other metals, other metal particles in this part of the atmosphere. Like the troposphere, temperatures go down as you travel up in the mesosphere. It's colder at the top of the mesosphere than the bottom.
Very rarely, clouds can form in the mesosphere. They are called noctilucent clouds or polar mesospheric clouds. They form at the very top of the mesosphere. The clou clouds form out of tiny freezing ice crystals. Most of the time, these clouds are not visible from the surface of the Earth. The thermosphere is located above the mesosphere. The boundary between the mesosphere and thermosphere is called the mesopause. The thermosphere reaches from about 85 kilometers above the surface of the Earth to between 500 and 1,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The size of the thermosphere changes based on activity from the sun. When the sun is shining most brightly on the thermosphere, the heat energy makes the thermosphere expand. When the sun is less active, the thermosphere temperature drops and shrinks. The Greek root therm means heat. Air molecules have the highest temperatures in the thermosphere. They can reach 2000 degrees Celsius because they absorb so much of the sun's radiation. However, it doesn't feel hot in the thermosphere because only molecules can hold heat. While the air molecules in the thermosphere are hot, there are so few of them that most of the thermosphere is freezing, just like in outer space. In fact, most of the thermosphere is considered a part of outer space. Satellites and the International Space Station orbit the Earth within the thermosphere. The thermosphere and the highest parts of the mesosphere are part of the ionosphere. The ionosphere is not a layer in the atmosphere, but it's used to describe the part of the atmosphere that absorbs most of the sun's radiation. When particles absorb radiation, they become ions. Ions are charged particles that behave differently than non-charged particles. Radiation from the sun colliding with ions in the ionosphere create the northern lights, or aurora borealis, and southern lights, or aurora australis. Often seen from the poles, these are amazing light shows in the night sky. The exosphere is the outermost layer of the atmosphere. It lies on top of the thermosphere. The exosphere starts around 1,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, but we don't know exactly where it ends because it fades into outer space. Scientists disagree on whether the exosphere is even a part of Earth's atmosphere. To be a part of the atmosphere, a layer must have air molecules. The air particles in the exosphere are so far apart, it feels like outer space. Satellites can orbit the Earth within the exosphere, and some orbit even lower in the thermosphere. According to NASA, a satellite is a moon, planet, or machine that orbits a planet or star. People have put satellites into orbit around the Earth to learn more about our planet and to support television and cellular communication. Gas particles within the exosphere move in a straight line as they gradually fall back to Earth. They do not collide with each other very often because there are so few of them. Sometimes gas particles with a lot of energy will fly out of Earth's atmosphere into space, creating a slow leak in the atmosphere. The leak is so slow that it won't affect humans, but scientists are studying it to learn more about the atmospheres of other planets. Earth is not the only planet in our solar system with an atmosphere. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune all have thick atmospheres. Mars and Venus both have atmospheres made up of carbon dioxide. However, Venus's atmosphere is much thicker than Mars's atmosphere. A thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide makes the temperature on Venus extremely high. Mars's thin atmosphere makes the planet cold. Earth's atmosphere isn't too thick or thin. That's why it's just the right temperature for life on Earth. Earth's atmosphere gives people air to breathe, the right temperature for life, and protection from dangerous sunlight. Without the atmosphere, we could not live on Earth. The end.